Welcome back to Arc Tutorials. This is Angular 14 full tutorial series for absolute beginners. In the last episode, we learned about components. Today, we are going to learn about standalone components. Standalone components was introduced in version 14 onwards. So if you are learning 14, 15 or 16 or any further version down the line, this is going to be part of Angular. And what are, ang what are Angular standalone components? How do we generate them? How do we work with them? I'm going to cover everything in this tutorial. That being said, let's get started. This is part 12 of the series. Uh, before we get started, if you need any help, you have any doubts, queries, you can either reach out to me in the comment section or you can send me an email at surya.aradhi at gmail.com. If you like my work and tutorials, please do consider buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash tutorials. Following is the playlist that we have covered so far and make sure that you go through entire playlist in order to learn and master Angular 14. Today we are learning about Angular standalone components. The prerequisites uh, before we learn this is uh, you should have some basic understanding of Angular components. If you are not sure, please refer to the previous episode. This is what I covered in the previous episode. So components are the most fundamental building blocks of Angular. How do we generate them? We use the command Angular CLI command ng generate component followed by the component name. I've covered this in detail in the last episode, so make sure you check that. Today we'll focus our on learning Angular standalone components. So what are standalone components? So standalone components provide a simplified way to build Angular applications. Standalone components specify the dependencies right inside the component class. We can reduce the dependency on ng module by not importing not required components, right? And how do we do that? By passing a flag, which is standalone in the while generating the component. Okay, so this is a high level theory, but I am going to show you in detail with a lot of explanation and code samples. Okay, so let's get started. I'll fire up my editor. So this is my editor right here and we are on Angular 14 project code. If I see my working directory, it's Angular invoice that we are building. Okay, so I'll go into the source and let's generate a simple component first to get your hands dirty with component generation. So how do we you generate it? Um, let's say pending tasks. This is a component I want to generate. So we will just type ng generate space C. So if you see, I have multiple modules here. One is for Angular Material, one is for App Module. So you would see this error. If you have only App Module, it would directly insert in App Module. But in my case, I have to mention it since I have more than one modules at the root level. So I'm going to do that. And specified module app module does not exist. Let's check the source. Okay. Let's we are in the okay, we need we'll go to app folder. Okay, and then generate this. Okay, so now we got a basic component generated. Okay, what these files are, what they do, I've covered it in the previous episode. <coughs> All right, so now let's generate a standalone component. I'm going to name this component as completed tasks. Okay, and instead of module and all those details, I told you we need to make pass a flag and the flag name is standalone. Okay, so this is will be the new command if you want to generate any standalone component. You will write ng generate c followed by the component name followed by flag which is hyphen hyphen standalone. Hit enter and see it has now generated a standalone component but it did not update any module. Okay, you see it did not update the module because there is no entry for modules. Okay, that's why they are called standalone components. Okay, to even understand this better, I'm going to make a use case for you. Okay, and then I'm going to show you how it works. So I'm going to say ng serve. So I'm running the application to show you the difference between standalone and a regular component. Let's give it a couple of seconds to build it. All right, so our application is compiled. <coughs> 
let's go to localhost 4200 and this is a default home that we created in the last uh, episode so to see the difference right we generated two components we generated two components right one normal way one is a stand alone component okay normal way as in regular component <coughs> now this has entry in app module okay now see this uh, that is pending task and this is completed tasks okay now see the difference in app module you go to app module you see the pending tasks okay because it's a component that we generated in a regular way which is without standalone flag completed flag doesn't have any entry anywhere it's there is no entry in app module okay so now what I'm going to do I'm going to go into the component and throw in a console log for debug this is pending tasks component save it okay so it's compiled but see I have not used I have not called I have just made an entry into app module right there is an entry in app module but I am not calling that component selector anywhere I am not using it then see what happens in the code if you right click and inspect in the console you see this message which is coming from pending tasks right that means even though you are not using that component it is still loaded as part of the module okay very very important point that I've just told you even though you are not using or calling the selector the component you are not loading the component it's still loaded as part of module right as part of app module in this case right that's why you see this message this is pending task component I have just added it in my app module so it is loading what happens is over a period of time you will have hundred components right you will not be needing all in one go you sometimes you just need them as standalone that means use them load them only when they are required that's where standalone component comes into picture okay so how does standalone works if you open that selector if you open the component you can see here in the flag you will see that there is a select inside this there is a option which is standalone is true okay so now this is a basic thing which tells that this is a standalone component okay all the required modules for this component to work will be going inside the imports array okay we'll talk about that in just a bit let me show you an example by working so I'm going to create a path and I'm going to say completed hyphen tasks and I'm going to map it to completed completed task component it's imported here okay so now I've built it so now I can go completed tasks so see it says completed tasks works though it's not added into any module it's a standalone components component on its own and it can work individually without entry in any module okay so it will work without uh, importing into any module or any dependency on ng module okay that's the right way to put it without without any dependencies dependencies on ng module <coughs> so that's the whole premise that's the whole uh, basic uh, usage of standalone components that you can use them without adding them into any module just use it wherever you want it loads okay now in some cases you will ask what about the dependency modules right let's say I have to design a button right <coughs> a button here now I want this button to be a mat button okay I want this button to be a mat button so I'm going to say submit okay and how do you do that so like I said we have a imports array where you will import whatever module you will require 
right so let's say you have I have imported the material examples module now this is what I will import into my standalone component as well and give its definition here import it done okay so now you can give uh, you can use any and all of the material exam modules what we did here we did it as part of the previous episode so make sure you check it out alternatively you can also import the modules that you need okay let's say for example from this material module I'm going to say import mat uh, button module right I want to use a button I want to only use a button you can do that as well just by mentioning mat button module and then here you will give mat hyphen button so see now it has become a mat button I'm going to call it mat raised button so now see the look and feel the touch is what was that for color color call it to be primary okay so now you see it has become an angular button I did not make an entry anywhere but I imported whatever is required so whatever are the dependency modules you can add them inside the imports modules array okay so that's the third piece of it first we learned how to generate the co standalone component we know that we don't have to make an entry we just have to use the standalone flag as option right in the CLI so you will write ng generate component component name followed by stand alone okay now that's how you generate standalone components you import all the required dependencies into the imports array okay the last thing that I want to show you is how do you convert existing components right existing components into standalone components okay you want to improve performance you can convert an existing component let's say I have uh, I think it uh, in users we have some list users right so this is an existing component right how do you upgrade it to standalone just import whatever is required into this and standalone copy I don't want mad button in this I want common module I'll use the quick fix to import and I'm done okay so now this component has also become standalone component right so we can go ahead and from the users module we can remove that declaration and clean up here so there is no more entry for list users component because now it is a standalone component I can do the same thing what I just did and create a path and say list users and I'm going to say here list users component and we are done let's go here say list users and it works just fine okay so that's how you create a standalone component that's how you import the required modules inside that particular component whatever is required and then you can just use them as a standalone component okay so that's the whole premise of standalone components I hope I made it easy clear to you it's understandable and clear but if you have any questions or doubts uh, reach out to me in the comment section or write to me and I'll be happy to help you in the next episode I'm going to show you and talk about component template uh, there are multiple ways of how you can inject templates uh, into component we'll see that real quick and then we'll keep moving in the series okay I hope you're enjoying the series I hope you're finding it useful if you like the video please do like this video share comment if you like my work uh, please do consider buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash arc tutorials thank you so much see you in the next episode